Benny is a small-time crook with a juicy operation in his sights. Huge bills, as he puts it. It's like, just sit in there cause it don't belong to nobody. Oh, poor, dumb Benny, don't you know money's never just sitting there? It usually comes with complications pesky people who also want those bills and who you might have to deal with, perhaps in an aggressive manner. And by the way, the two neighborhood buddies you enlist to help? Well, maybe they're not all that reliable. In fact, Benny, Robert Lee Lang, is just the hapless detonator that sets off the drama in Paul Calderon's Divine Horseman. The explosives are the aforementioned friends, both older, iffy, David Zayas, the grizzled bear of a man who runs Caballeros Divinos, the titular, dingy Spanish Harlem social club, and Willie, Mr. Calderon, who also directs, a slick thug playing it cool. In tough guy plays, movies, and TV shows, Natalie attired men often turn out to be violent sociopaths. Keeping with that tradition, the cocksure Willie calmly slinks into the club, acts much bigger than his schemes deserve one involves stealing dogs, then returning them for the reward and lords it over Benny and Iffy. Iffy, portrayed with gruff assurance by Mr. Zayas, who was in the original productions of Stephen Adley Girgis's Jesus Hop the Train and Our Lady of 121st Street, as well as in Nilo Cruz's Anna in the Tropics, looks like he could easily stand up to Willie, yet he keeps falling in line with the aging alpha hoodlum. Mr. Calderon writes Florid, Rapid Fire New Yorkese which is necessary because his character's gift of gab is all they have. Yet it all feels a little forced, as if the play was going down a checklist of tough guy tropes. As Chekhov didn't write, if there is a baseball bat in a show, skulls need to be bashed at some point. Divine Horseman actually goes back to 1995, when it was a workshop production at the Labyrinth Theatre Company with a cast that included Mr. Calderon and Mr. Zayas, rounded out by Philip Seymour Hoffman and John Ortiz. Mr. Calderon has done some rewrites for this much-delayed premiere, presented by his and Mr. Zayas's Primitive Grace Company. But the vibe remains, wittingly or not, almost nostalgic for a time when the poetry of masculine bravado held special mystique divine horseman comfortably travels this familiar ground until about halfway through, when Benny comes up with his ill-fated idea, which involves stealing rare comic books and trading cards. The arrival of the mentally disabled Raffi, veteran labyrinth member David D. Blinger, then kicks the show into a higher gear for the finale, Mr. D. Blinger's outsized performance seems to electrify the rest of the cast. Still, it's hard not to feel frustrated. The best dramas dealing with violence use it to uncover greater truths about human nature. No such revelation happens in Divine Horsemen, whose petty ruffians somehow make tragedy feel small.